Miller. Good evening. Um, how many of you can tell whether or not I'm a racist? It should be obvious. I'm white. But I'm also pleased to tell you that my mother, her genotype came out of Africa 400,000 years ago. About 50 years ago, a young black man by the name of Flowers saved my life in Vietnam. I'm glad to report that two weeks later, I was able to return the favor. I didn't see Flowers as a black man. I saw him as one of my soldiers from South Carolina. Now, I don't like being called a racist on the basis of the color of my skin. And I don't think it's fair to young black kids or young Latinos to be considered of less capability to, be, to consider somehow deficient on the basis of the color of their skin. I think that's ridiculous. But we're talking about your equity statement. And um, I, I did bother to make some notes. I, I want history of slavery taught. The whole, the good, the bad, and the ugly. There's no reason to, to shy from our, the, our bad and good and ugly. I want, how many people in this room know that Abraham Lincoln was a Republican? Okay. He was a Republican. And um, so what, uh, I'm sorry, I've, I've gotten uh, uh, long-winded. So what, this equity statement is critical race theory. It's based on the basic principles that were taught by Crenshaw and others. You don't have to be a rocket scientist, just go look it up, see what they said about it. Equity, inclusion, diversity are the socialist utopia enforced by critical race theory. Now I know all of you are saying, oh no, it can't be. We don't teach critical race theory here. I know that. That's graduate level stuff. Your new school board uh, superintendent knows that. She was taught that. But critical race theory is what the policy is when you say we're going to look at everything through an, through an intersectional lens. It's in the first paragraph of this statement. Thank you so much. <laughs>